Good morning. Today is a very gloomy day, but hey, it's Friday and I have my day off, which is so great. And now we're bringing the show to you in horizontal mode or landscape mode, sorry. Because apparently, you know, kittens die in vertical mode. So now I can walk around on the streets and people can actually see that I am, you know, I'm one of those, uh, what you call them, <sighs> hip, cool bloggers who videotapes their own face. Like uh, I'm trying to hide the fact that I walk around videotaping myself because, you know, you never have you ever looked on the streets and you see one of those, you know, really fancy women who have, like they have, they're basically a, a fashion statement wait, waiting to happen, pulling out their phone. And then all, all of a sudden the selfie, sticks, selfie stick comes out and you kind of like, <sighs> wow. So now I'm one of those people. That's great. No, nope, sorry. Let's get to it. So I wanted to talk to you about a really nice little conversation, have a little bit of a nice conversation about something that I think is happening in the programming world right now. So, I'm, you may or may not know this, but PHP is the all-time grand champion of web accessibility. And I'm not talking about for people with disabilities, I'm talking about people who want to get into programming and get a web page up really quickly and build something. I th uh, because of WordPress, well, uh, the web is running roughly 33% or like a third of all its websites using PHP. And you know, of course, that Facebook, like today they have their own brand of PHP, but they started with PHP as well. So it's this tried and true, really nice language for building web applications. Now, I argue though, that I started with PHP 2, but I argue that that may change in a like fairly soon because of Node.js. And I'm not gonna like you lie and say anything besides it, but I, I, I'm a big advocate of Node.js. I'm not saying it's perfect for everything because it's not, it's, it's really not, but it's a, it, it has the same type of role that PHP does, in my opinion. It's this language that it's going, it has value in so many places that I honestly think that it will, it will take PHP's place, and it's already doing that, as this bread and butter, easy to learn, easy to get started programming language. That, it, and like WordPress announced, I don't know if that's still on though, but I did read that they are saying that the next version, the major version of, Node, of WordPress is gonna be a Node.js application. And I mean, it will take years. I'm not, I'm not saying that PHP is going anywhere. Absolutely not. I mean, we still have stuff that's running on COBOL. So when I mean, people say, oh, this language is dead now, that's usually not the case. A language is dead when there's not an active community with a vested interest in maintaining the, like the, the future development of that language. And PHP, not, not that long ago, it got some major bumps and improvements, so I don't see that going anywhere. But what, what I wanted to say is that I think that if you are, like, if you want to start doing stuff and like you're asking yourself, all right, what programming language should I start with? and like in your desire is to make web application i really urge you to look at node like and and not just because i say it of course you know I go out and node is massive i mean its popularity is bigger than java and that's a very big language and this is in just a few years so there's a good some good stuff here and a few of the highlights about node is that it's all javascript so and you know if you want to build web applications today you still need to learn javascript so everything you learn to for the browser it's going to apply to the server and that's one of the biggest benefits with this apart from that it takes care of threading issues and memory leaks and stuff like that for the most part it's not perfect but it does and then it's 
fairly, very, very well uh, maintained by the Node.js team and they have uh, like a lot of active contrib uh, contributors. There's so many different packages and tutorials and stuff. So it's a very good friendly ecosystem to get into. The, there are issues of course, uh, but I'll not go into them so specific like right now because they're, they're really technical. And usually when you're just starting out, you're not doing something that is that difficult, but there are issues. There are, uh, all, there's always issues. So I highly recommend that if you're just starting out just start with Node if you just want to make web applications because it's going to be a really good bet. And yeah, what, what else is there to say? Well, another benefit, hey, if I want to plug myself or whatever that's called, is that if you do Node.js development, you're going to get more value out of this little channel of mine because it's like JavaScript and Node and I try to focus on these technologies because I really believe, like I, I made that choice a while back where I, I look, I've looked at all of the languages and all of the developments in the IT world. And from my perspective, and my, I might be completely wrong, but from the way I see things are going and when I consider these valuable things I mentioned to you earlier, especially the fact that it's just one language all across your stack, I can't see any reason why node isn't going to be the next big like it's going to keep on being this big very popular language especially for smaller companies who do prototypes and stuff like when you don't need types this is i don't see why you would choose anything else it's it's really good stuff the value is massive so i focus a lot of that i specialize as much as I can in this technology. I'm, I'm, you know, my, my philosophy is that you, you know, you master the skills that you use every day and then you hone the skills that you need for tomorrow. So, and that's always been the case. And I recommend you have a similar attitude. You know, you don't have to be a master of everything because nobody's a master of everything, but get really good at something you think is going to be very interesting for you and hopefully like relevant and then have a pretty good understanding of everything else. That's what I do. So like this, most of the stuff that you're gonna see, unless you know something comes along and completely blows me away and I start moving in a completely different direction, most of the stuff that you're gonna see me talking about is related to Node and JavaScript and so forth. Of course, I'm gonna talk about other stuff as well, but that's, that's the place I think that the most stuff is happening. And for me, that's, why I keep on doing that, doing like these videos and focusing on JavaScript because I honestly believe and I also try to align my career towards this because even if Node goes away, JavaScript isn't going anywhere. It's just, there's so much time and interest and money invested into this platform. And even if you don't like JavaScript, uh, I have some colleagues I usually, a joke with them and I say hey like they talk about yeah, JavaScript is like it's just crap and I said yeah it is crap but it's also great and there is a shitstorm coming and you can either like you, you can either just stand there and be frustrated while, while everything's pouring down over you or you can do like me and steer into it and become a master of this this thing and I think that that's actually the thing that is going to be most important in the long run because Innovation and community and popularity is a big part in what makes a programming language into something great. Because you look at C and C++, their communities are almost non-existent. And you know, if, you, if we're being really honest here, if they maintain their community in the way that JavaScript and Node and so forth did, and developed it and like made it accessible for people, there would be no reason for anybody to use anything else. Really, like it would be, the only language we would use for everything that is because it's such a powerful language you can do anything almost anything in it so so that kind of i'm not saying that that's you know definitive proof but it, it, it should make you kind of think so why isn't this the only thing we're using well very simply nobody's interested like they are not getting new blood into their community they're not maintaining stuff in the way that i mean their their focus is very different like and bjarne strosup is one of like he's he's a god in that community and i've watched a few talks of him and he's trying and i've seen him try to talk about community and moving in c++ in a new direction and like getting people like 
new people into it. And I think he's absolutely right. That's what should be happening. And hopefully he'll, he'll, he'll make that happen because you, you just see these languages who have all this, like, like this, this heritage and power and stuff. Erlang is such a language. Like Elixir is one of my favorite kids on the block for this exact reason. Think of it this way. Erlang is a horrible language. I've met, I actually met one person who liked it, but the language was never designed to be accessible to you and me. It was designed for the Ericsson team. But the technology, like the, the beam and the, the virtual machine they run on, it's amazing. And then they come around, Jose Valim comes in and like, hey, I'm really good at making languages. Let's make this accessible to everybody. I would, I'm, that's just genius. And I think we, that, that kind of proves that, and the popularity should prove to you how important it is to maintain a healthy community.